Welcome to Take Your Territory with Jamie Rohrbach. This is the podcast where I encourage you to go out and take your dream, receive your destiny from the Lord Jesus, the destiny that He planned for you before the foundation of the world. This is the territory that God has ordained for your life. It's a big dream that you have, and it can happen. Every good thing is waiting for you, and today we're going to talk about making that visible in your life. Stay tuned for today's episode. Hello, friend. Welcome to today's episode of Take Your Territory with Jamie Rohrbaugh. How many of you know we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of this present darkness? We are engaged in battle in the spirit realm, whether we like it or not. So my friend, I want to encourage you today by telling you that the Bible has all the keys you need for winning this fight, winning every fight, in fact. Today's spiritual warfare key is found in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 22. Let's pray and then I'll read the passage. Father God, we come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, we love you. We thank you that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Father, we thank you that as we dwell in the secret place of the Most High, Father, we remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. Lord, I ask right now that you would anoint me to teach this word, that indeed Holy Spirit would actually speak this word through me and to us all himself. Thank you, God. We yield to you completely. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you and we bow to you. We just say, take the floor, teach us your word and equip us for your glory. In Jesus' name, we plead that blood of Jesus, Father, over this message. Amen. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 22 says this, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, test all things, hold fast what is good, abstain from every form of evil. Today, my friend, we are talking about the key, test all things, hold fast what is good. How many of you have ever sat down to a meal? and you found a little bit of bone in your meat that you didn't think was going to be there? Did you throw the whole meal away? Or did you say, no, I'm going to eat the meat, spit out the bones, and it's going to be okay? But you know what? If you decided to eat that meat, spit out those bones, and enjoy your meal anyway, you would have just exercised the literal equivalent of what in the spirit realm would be spiritual discernment. Because in the spirit realm, we continually have to test all things. We have to eat the meat and spit out the bones. In spiritual warfare, our first goal is always to make sure that whatever we see, whatever we sense, whatever we say, whatever we think we discern is in accordance and alignment with the Bible, the written word of God. This book is the infallible, inerrant word of God to us. And this book contains all the truth that we need in life or the principles that will teach us the truths for things that are not even specifically mentioned. So in the Bible, we read the first spiritual warfare key. It is Isaiah 8.20. It says this, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Isn't that easy? God just tells us so clearly, if someone is telling you something that doesn't line up with this word, if someone is doing something and you see it and you think, well, I thought that was a godly person. I thought that was a Christian or I thought that everything they did would be above reproach. And yet the thing that you're seeing is clearly forbidden in this word. Then my friend, you have discerned correctly because you have tested something and you have noticed that it is bad and not good. Therefore, you are to test it, you are to hold fast what is good, and you are to throw out the things that are bad. 1 John 4, 1-6 tells us how to do this even when we're dealing with the things in the unseen realm, when we are dealing with angels and demons. Angels are God's ministers, they are God's servants, but demons are the servants of Satan, the enemy. And here in 1 John, we read that there's a very simple question that you can ask whenever you have an encounter with a being from the unseen realm. 1 John 4, 1-6 says this, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God. 
because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore they speak as of the world. And the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. My friend, there is a spirit of truth. He has a name. His name is Holy Spirit. That there is a spirit of error that the demons are trying to perpetuate on you, that the devil and his minions are trying to push into your life and trying to convince you that what is false is actually real, trying to convince you that what is good is actually bad. They are trying to deceive you. Jesus said that when the devil speaks, it is only lies because there is no truth in him. That means it is not even possible for the devil to say anything true at all. Jesus told us that the devil is a liar and the father of lies. God is truth. He is the father of truth. He is the spirit of truth. And everything he says is true. So as long as we cleave to God and we reject everything that is not of God, you're going to be safe. So what's the question in 1 John 4 that you should ask every spirit? It's simply this. Ask every spirit to confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. In fact, I would even say that you should insist that every spirit confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Demand that every spirit make this confession. Why is this confession important? Because if you dissect these words, Jesus Christ means Jesus the anointed one. The word Christ means the anointed one. He is the one that was prophesied in the Bible that he would come and he would save us from our sins. The Christ, that is a title, not simply another name. It's a title. And so when you insist that any being you encounter in the unseen realm or from the unseen realm confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, then you are forcing them to affirm that Jesus, the Son of God, is God, that he is the anointed one, that he is the Savior of the world, that he has already come in bodily form. That means you are actually forcing them to confess that the man Jesus, who lived on the earth, is God and is the Savior of the world. That is the confession the saints make. That is the confession of the redeemed. That is the confession of the servants of God in heaven. But that is not the confession of the realm of darkness. No demon will ever confess that Jesus is the Christ come in the flesh. They will instead either not answer at all or they will say no or they will make some other reply. But it will never ever be that yes, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Are you in a controlling relationship? Maybe the relationship is with a romantic partner, your significant other, a husband or a wife, or maybe it's even with a friend, a family member, a parent, or unfortunately, sometimes this happens, even with your local church. Hey, if you are in a controlling relationship where someone is controlling you in an unholy way, I'm not talking about just holy submission to authority, but if true control is happening, that is not from the Lord. If someone is trying to manipulate you, keep you down, keep a lid on you, that is not from the Lord because the Bible says that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is liberty. Jesus also said that you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. And in that spirit of knowing the truth so that the truth can make you free, I recorded a class about how to break free from the spirit of control. Now this video class actually even includes a bonus video teaching about the Jezebel spirit, how to defeat it, how to get out away from it, and how to beat it in your life and have victory over it through the power of Holy Spirit. So in the main video about how to break free from the spirit of control, that video is an hour and a half long. It talks about what the spirit of control is and what it isn't. 
three root issues that open a door for a spirit of control to operate, nine signs a spirit of control is operating, five must-know techniques to help you break free from that spirit of control, and how to discern if you should walk away from a situation or if you should simply refine a relationship and establish boundaries. Also, the bonus video teaching about how to recognize and deal with the Jezebel spirit, how to beat that thing, is one hour, nine minutes long. And in it, I teach what the Jezebel spirit is, which may surprise you because standard teaching from the church on this is often incorrect. I also teach you how to recognize the Jezebel spirit, how to combat it, how to stay safe from it, and how to win against it. This video bundle is powerful, and it is available to you on my Gumroad store. It is instantly downloadable. It is only $30 for a total of two hours and 40 minutes of total video on this important topic, spiritual warfare topic about how to break free from the spirit of control and how to get away from, out from under the Jezebel spirit. This video is absolutely essential. This class is absolutely essential. If you want to get out of a controlling situation where you are being controlled, manipulated, and kept down, please get this class today. To get it, you can go to my Gumroad store at Gumroad, that's G-U-M-R-O-A-D, Gumroad, like chewing gum, gumroad.com forward slash from his presence, and just type control in the search bar, and you will see it come right up. Or you can go to my website, fromhispresence.com, click on store, and it'll take you right to my Gumroad store where you can download this video class instantly. It's going to be a blessing to your life, and just as importantly, it's going to help you get free from the enemy trying to control you so you can walk in the freedom and the liberty that Jesus Christ purchased for you on the cross. Get it today. You'll be glad you did. So it says here in 1 John 4, 1 through 6, that every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Well, how do you know? Well, if you are encountering something from the spirit realm, maybe you're hearing a voice, don't assume that voice is you. Don't assume that voice is good or bad. Ask it right away. Is Jesus Christ come in the flesh? If you hear silence, then say, leave in Jesus' name, because that thing's a devil. If you hear yes, then good. That's the voice of the Lord or the voice of one of his ministering angels. This is easy and you can do it. I promise you, my three-year-old son has learned how to do this. He tells me and has since he was a baby and able to talk. He tells me that he can see in the spirit realm. Don't tell children who tell you they see monsters or snakes or other things in their bedroom at night that they're imagining it. Why don't you ask them a few questions because children see in the spirit realm. And so I have taught my child when he sees something to ask it, is Jesus Christ come in the flesh? And he knows that if it says no or if it won't answer, then he says, leave in Jesus' name. Oh, and my child loves to tell me all about how to fight spiritual warfare. I'm telling you, anybody can do this. Here's another way to test all things and hold fast what is good. You can and should ask God to give you the gift of discernment of spirits. Now that doesn't mean that you should no longer, after receiving that gift of discernment of spirits, test things against the Word of God. That is always our first test. That is always our go-to. The Word of God is our first diagnostic tool. You can ask God to give you a sense of spiritual smell. That really is the best way I know to describe the gift of discernment of spirits. It is when Holy Spirit gives you the supernatural ability to more easily smell what is going on in the spirit realm. Now you can't depend on it 100%. You still have to test those spirits against the Word of God and you have to ask them if Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Because if you don't, if you depend only on your own feeling, you can get yourself into trouble and you can hurt other people when other people shouldn't be hurt. But Holy Spirit will give you, if you ask him, the gift of discernment of spirits, which is listed as one of the spiritual gifts in the book of 1 Corinthians. It's like Holy Spirit whispers to you, there's a demon of something here. That's a demon. There's something holy here. There's a smell of the incense of prayer here. You just can smell in the spirit realm and you know what's going on. And this gift is a tremendous help also because it helps you to know how to pray and how to intercede. When you are testing all things and holding fast what is good, then you can say, God, this right here lines up with your word. This lines up with your word as well. 
but this over here does not match your word. Now, Father God, I ask in Jesus' name that you would cast down every imagination and every high and lofty thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. You say, Father God, I ask that you would bind that off. I ask that you would change their heart. I ask that you would expose and reveal the thoughts of men. Father, I ask that you would fill us with your spirit of purity, that you would fill us with your holiness, that you would make the witness of Jesus magnified in this place. And you come against anything evil that you sense or discern by praying in the opposite thing. For example, if you sense that there's a stronghold of lust in a city, maybe there is a lot of trafficking in a city or places of ill repute, then you can easily start to pray in that God would send his spirit of holiness and purity and conviction. When you have that sense of discernment of spirits that you know what's happening in the spirit realm because you can smell it and then you test it according to God's word as well, then you know better how to fight that good fight of faith because you can smell in the spirit realm what the strategy should be. You can see what the enemy armies are doing behind their own front lines. And you can send in by your prayers and by your speaking and confession of the word, you can send in God's armies. You can send in those angels by your prayers saying, Father God, I ask you to dispatch your armies, your heavenly hosts to do this or to do that. This is all part of testing the spirits and of holding fast to only what is good. Hey friend, do you need resurrection in your life? If so, I want to tell you about an ebook that I released. It's called Live Again, 21 Prophetic Words That Make Dry Bones Rattle. And this title comes out of the book of Ezekiel, you know, the vision where the Lord spoke to the prophet Ezekiel and had him speak to the bones and the bones came to life. And if you feel like you have been just dead inside, dry inside, no hope inside, then I want you to know that right now God is moving in your heart, he's moving in your spirit to bring you back to life. And so I made this ebook of these 21 prophetic words that I felt were for right now. Even as I was editing it and putting it together with the help of my team, I was just struck by the words over and over again as God was saying, this is for you. This is for the promises I've made you. This is the covenant I've made with you. This is the new beginnings you've longed for. Over and over, these words just affirmed that. And it's straight from the word of God. These are prophetic words that I've scribed, listening to the Lord, just taking dictation basically from the Lord, hearing what he had to say and writing it down for you. So I hope you'll get this ebook. It's called Live Again, 21 Prophetic Words That Make Dry Bones Rattle. A smattering of the words include titles such as Do Not Limit the Holy One of Israel, Don't Doubt Your New Beginnings, I Am Restoring Your Happy Tears, Says the Lord, Fly High with Favor You Don't Need. One of my favorites is A Lessening of Common Grace is Kicking You Out of the Nest. Another one, Declare and Decree Multiplication and Increase into Your Life a prayer to cross over into the promised land, and another one of my favorites, a prayer, a powerful spiritual warfare prayer for punitive damages in the spirit. This is an ebook you can get on my Gumroad store. It's instantly downloadable. It is a PDF file, 83 pages in length and easily formatted for you to read on your mobile device. Check it out on my store at gumroad.com forward slash from his presence, and I believe it'll bless you. Beloved, if you want to live victoriously, you must test the spirits. Don't think that the first thing you notice or the first thing that appeals to you is God. We have to look at everything and judge it, not judging in an unholy way that says that God can't help this person or that that person is lost or saved. Only God knows the hearts. But you know what? We have to judge according to whether something matches the word of God or not whether it is God's will or not, based on the scriptures, based on whether that thing will confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh or not. Beloved, we have to test all things and hold fast what is good. We have to be so careful with this gift, but it is still the commissioning of God. So many people are deceived because they have not tested things. They have looked at the person who comes in with all the charisma, with all the appearance of charismatic gifts, with all the leadership skills, with all the popularity. And sometimes we follow these people blindly 
as if we just want to get into some kind of relationship that will give us a promotion or that will increase our esteem in the eyes of men. But my friend, who cares about those things? Honestly, wouldn't you rather walk before God in white? Wouldn't you rather keep those robes of yours clean? Wouldn't you rather know that you are honoring Holy Spirit in all things and not giving way to any persuasive doctrines of men that go against God's word? You must avoid everything that does not line up with God's inerrant, infallible word, the Bible. And how do we do that? It is by testing all things, holding fast what is good. We eat the meat, we spit out the bones. We are clear in our discernment. We ask the Lord to give us that sense of spiritual discernment and to sharpen that gift, to teach us how to notice things. And when we ask him these things, when we pay attention and we test all things against the word, we will walk in greater victory. Hey, thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast if this has been a blessing to you. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.